God, we thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for the victory. We love you today, Lord. And I can't forget what Jesus did way back on Calvary and his sacrifice to bring me life and life eternal and my ransom pay in Jesus name he wipes my past away and pardon my soul for Sing it together this morning. And Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, crucified.
God, praise God, praise God. Can we just praise Him? Everybody lift up a great praise to our God and Savior. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for that blood on that tree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Isn't the Lord good this morning? That's pretty amazing that our team wrote that song. I love it. I think it's catchy. I think it gets in your soul. It gets in your spirit. I like songs that stay with me. I hope you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning thinking about all that blood that was on that tree. It was shed for me. It was shed for me. Where would you be without that blood? I feel like uh, singing maybe uh, key of A flat. <laughs> or anywhere you want to go. It don't really matter to me. I feel like singing an old one right now. I think you might know this one. Amazing grace. Sing it, church. How sweet. At every campus, sing it in Gwinnett, Buford, and Spartanburg, and down there in Midtown. Just begin to sing it. Lift Jesus high. Like me. I was lost, but now I'm blind. Was blind. Give me a beat. But now I see. I love that second verse. I have already come. Sing it, church. Twas grace that brought me safe thus far. Can you look back and see where he brought you from? And can you throw up a hand and give him thanks? And you can know that that grace, that same grace, will lead me home. Oh, when we bend down. You're singing good. Sing it out loud right where you are. 10,000 years bright shine. One day, won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. Oh, we know no less days to see God's praise than when we first. you believe that? Give him praise this morning. We're going to sing that in heaven one of these days. We're going to sing that in heaven on streets of gold one of these days. Praise God. Praise God. Smile at somebody around you. Welcome them to church. Tell them I'm glad you decided to sit by me. Whether they decided or not, they're there. If you have your Bible, open it with me to the book of Acts chapter 27. So wonderful to have all of you with us. Welcome all of our campuses. We love you guys so much and are so thankful for what he's doing in every place. And, um, you know, I want to say we're so thankful for our online audience too. Can we give them a warm welcome today? God bless you. Sharice and I celebrated our 31st anniversary this year. That's, that's a pretty big deal. 31 years and 
people were commenting. We posted a picture and people, I, I read it at least three times and I quit reading. They said, one guy, I guess he was trying to be nice and stuff, but he offended me. He said, uh, he said, why is it our wives look so much younger than we do? And then another guy says, she looks like she could be your daughter. And then another guy says, where did you get her from? The crib? And, and, and just, I mean, you know, just really saying that I look a lot older than she does. And I don't appreciate that, but it's because she's put me through a lot in 31 years. That's right. That's right. But I do, and I am so thankful for Sharice Franklin. She is an amazing woman, mother, wife, first lady of this church. She has had a profound, profound effect in everything that we have done for the glory of God. And I'm very, very thankful for you. You're amazing. And we'll continue this if you later. <laughs> Amen. All right, Acts chapter 27. You ready? I'll begin reading with verse 17. They're in an awful, awful storm in this text. Paul is on a ship that's in a storm because they're out of the will of God. They weren't supposed to go in that direction. God warned them, but now they're in a storm. Verse 17, when they had taken it on board, they used uh, braces to undergird the ship, fearing lest they should run aground on the citrus sands. They struck sail and so were driven. Because there were exceeding tempests tossed, the next day they lightened the ship. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. I like the fact that it said that they did it with their own hands, overboard with their own hands. And now when there was neither sun or, or uh, moon for uh, stars appeared for many days, no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. That's a dark place, right? I mean, there's no hope. This is bad. And <clears throat> Paul stands up and speaks, and for the sake of time, verse 22, and now I urge you, brethren, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid. Watch, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. Your purpose is greater than your storm. You're going through this for a purpose, and this is a part of your purpose. This is a key to understanding the story and the lesson in it. And he says, you know, that you've got to stand before Caesar. So I want to keep going and I want you to notice some things. Verse 20, 29, real quick. Then fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight to come. There were certain sailors who, who escaped the ship, were seeking to escape the ship, and they let down the skiff in, or the lifeboat into the sea under the pretense, pretending that they were putting out the anchors. <laughs> And Paul then said to them, the soldiers and the centurion, unless these men say in, stay in the ship, it cannot be saved. Verse 29 said they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight to come. Apparently, one of the keys to surviving the storm is anchored, being anchored right, being anchored properly. I'm preaching today on that word anchored because it's a matter of time before everybody goes through storms. This is a true story and it happened March the 27th, 2009. I know football is starting up and this was a story about two NFL players and their friends. Uh, one of them was a college football player about to go pro and they were in the Gulf of Mexico and they were in a tragic accident. They were fishing and having fun and a storm came and they saw it coming and they had put anchor, their anchor out and this is what the headline read. It said uh, the NFL players and their friends in the Gulf of Mexico had concluded, has concluded that it was caused when the vessel was improperly anchored, the boat capsized. And the story ends 
by telling how the Oakland Raiders linebacker and free agent for uh, Corey Smith and another young man from the University of South of Florida were, were lost and killed and only one lone survivor stayed out at sea holding on to something that was floating for two solid days. And they end the story by saying this, overall, it was just a mistake in anchoring. Apparently, anchoring is a very important thing in the natural, and it, it is a vital thing. And that's why the scripture mentions they put four anchors out that would keep them from drifting too far into the rocks and into disaster. You've got to have your life, your family, your marriage anchored. And that's what I'm talking about today because God doesn't just want us to go through storms. He wants us to grow through them. If you're going through something, it's not just because God is sadistic and he wants to see you hurt and wants to see you struggle and wants to see you discouraged. Don't just go through the storm, grow through it because storms can make you stronger. In 1991, eight scientists created an artificial environment in a place called Oracle, Arizona, out in the desert. It was named Biosphere 2. They lived, these eight scientists lived for two solid years inside that bubble, basically. And in there, what's amazing is they created a mini ecosystem that included a desert, a rainforest, even a tiny ocean. They had everything that we have, and they lived self-contained, grew their own food, everything inside of that ecosystem that they created. But the one thing that they failed to do is they failed to create weather that was contrary and wind that would blow strong. When they understood after a while that the effects of a windless, stormless environment was detrimental, the, the way they found that out was the trees started bending over and they couldn't figure out why. And if they only have sunshiny days or even rainy days, but the winds of adversity don't blow on those trees, they eventually will bend over and completely break. And so apparently there's a great lesson in that, that, that like it or not, weathering storms builds our strength. And there's a purpose for the storm. It is to build your faith, build your confidence, build your praise, build your prayer life, build your dependency upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to give you quickly three things that Paul instructed them to do when you're in a storm. When you go through a storm, the first thing he said in Acts 27 and 17 is he said, brace up, brace up the ship. And so they see a storm coming. They know it's going to get bad. And they said, you know, we're about to enter into something. We better brace this ship up a little bit. It needs a little reinforcement. And they, the way they did that in Bible days is the sailor would jump off of the ship with a large thick rope. He would have to swim under the ship and they would take it up the other side, tie it and do the process all over again, undergirding that ship, embracing that ship, making it strong enough to go through the storm that was coming. I believe that's a powerful instruction when you understand this is what you are to do when you get in a storm. Brace up your mind with the word of God. The first thing you ought to go to when you hit rough weather, spiritually speaking, is brace up your mind in the word of God. Think straight. Take control of your thoughts and brace up your mind with the word of God. Scriptures like 1 Peter chapter 2, by his stripes I am healed. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of the... What does that do? It braces you up. It declare the truth of God's word in the midst of your circumstances. I always go to this one. I love this. It's one of my favorite verses. It always has been. In Job chapter 8 and verse 7, it says, Where you begin will seem unimportant because your future will be so successful. Where you begin will seem unimportant the Living Bible says, because your future will be successful. And you know, when you're going through the storm, you don't feel that. You feel like you don't have any future. You feel like you don't have anything ahead of you, but you undergird your mind. You, you, embrace, you, you, you brace up your mind with 
the word of God. Jeremiah 1 and 5 said, before I was formed in my mother's womb, God called me and ordained me. He knew everything I would go through and he's given me the faith I need to get to the other side. Jeremiah 29 and 11, it braces you up. It braces your thoughts up when you declare the word of God. I know the plans you have for me, plans of good and not evil to give me a hope and a future. One translation said, you have a future filled with hope. Boy, you need to hear that when you're going through the storm. You have, a few, you, have to, you have to brace your mind up with the word of God because if you don't, fear will take over. Worry will take over. Depression will take over. Discouragement and disappointment will take over. So you brace your family up. You brace your marriage up with the word of God. I mentioned that my wife and I celebrated our anniversary for 31 years and when we've gone through storms in our marriage, because every marriage goes through storms. And don't run from church when you get in a storm. That's when you need the church like never before. When your family and your marriage and you feel unworthy and you feel like you don't have a right because you've been arguing and fighting, you come to church and you brace that marriage up with the word of God, not your feelings, not your emotions, not how you're feeling right now. I just feel like I'd be better off by myself. I just feel like I, God, we, God didn't put us together. All those lies the enemy will tell if you don't brace yourself up with the word of God. You know, when me and Sharice, especially that first year and few years there through too, we, 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 we had major challenges. And Pat, my mother-in-law, sitting down here on the front row, and she was so instrumental in her husband, Jimmy, who's gone on to be with the Lord, because they would sit us down. And just when we just felt like we couldn't take it anymore and we couldn't stand each other anymore and we'd miss God and all those stupid lies that the devil would tell you, you know, they would, they would sit us down. I mean, there was no, there was no wiggle room. They, she, she would say to Sharice, you're not coming to my house. You're not coming in. You, 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 God put you together. And then Jimmy would get on me and he'd take me in the back room somewhere and start pouring, saying things to me, you know, and it builds you up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It braces up the ship for the storm that you're going through through. I remember I wrote down some notes. I remember I, I really believed the first year, pretty much every argument we got into, I believed it was Sharice's fault. I really believed that. I mean, I was convinced this is she, what is your deal? I really believed that if I could just make her more like me, because I'm practically perfect in my own mind, I'm practically per, you know, that's how I thought. And we don't understand marriage, marriage, man, marriage is brutal on selfishness. It's brutal on selfishness. One man said that the first few years of marriage after, after being in it said his wife said, Cinderella lied. You're neither a prince nor are you charming. And then she threw the glass slipper at him. <laughs> you begin to lose hope. I'm telling you, people begin to lose hope in their marriage because they don't brace that marriage up in the word of God. In those times, you have to take the word of God out and brace that marriage up and say, no, 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 no. My emotions are not right. Circumstances are not right. This fight is not right. The word of God is truth and right. And Hebrews 13 and four says that marriage is honorable. One translation said marriage is precious. Now it doesn't feel precious all the time. But, but, but when you're in it, you brace yourself up. It's precious. It's of great price. It's especially dear. Marriage is. And so you quote the scriptures, Proverbs 5, 18, rejoice with the wife of your youth. Rejoice with the husband of your youth. In other words, the one you started out with, that's what you have to brace your, uh, nobody else for me, nobody else, I, I'm not, we're going to work it out. If the problem won't go away, it means we are supposed to work it out and we're going to brace ourselves up and I'm going to rejoice with the wife of my youth. Not a new one. Not a new one. First Corinthians 13 will brace up your marriage. Love never fails. If you are in a crisis, don't let the storm sink your marriage. Maybe it's a financial storm. Your month is longer than your money. Build and brace that 
financial world up with the word of God. My God will supply all my needs. Hebrews 4, 19, according to his riches and glory. Malachi 3 and 10, God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. You know, I read this the other day. This is just a side note, but I read this the other day where it said that uh, Abraham, you know, his name in the Old Testament was Abram. And God changed his name. And you know when he changed it, if you read it, he went to Melchizedek and paid his tithes. And God added on to his name, Ham. And I, I just felt like saying, I wrote it in my Bible, if you're tired of spam, start paying your tithes and God will put you on Ham. Come on, that'll preach. That's a better point than you reacted to. They're shouting in Beaufort and shouting in Gwinnett and shouting in Spartanburg. Turn to somebody and say, you look like you've been eating spam, but you need to pay your tithes and God will give you some ham. Abraham, come on, that's a good joke. Say amen. That was worth getting up and coming to church for right there. I'm glad I traded in my spam for ham on God's economy and God's plan. How about you? He's El Shaddai, not El Cheapo. He'll supply your needs. So, so brace up your mind with the word of God. Secondly, Paul said in Acts 27 in verse 30, he said, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. When you're in a storm, it's no time to have a pity party. Cheer up, cheer up. Hope must rule your heart. Control your attitude. Cheer up. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It could be so much worse. You could be in a hospital. You could be dying. You could have got a terrible thing. So, so, all kinds of, no matter how bad your storm is, it could be so much worse. So cheer up. Listen, the message of Christianity is victory. Not victim, not depression, not despair, not going through trials. The message of Christianity is victory. This is the faith that overcomes the world. This is the faith that hell can't stop, demons can't stop. You have an anchor that is stronger than lies and, and, and all the enemy brings against you. So, so cheer up. Cheer up and be of good cheer, Paul said, right in the middle of the storm. He's leading you, the scripture declares, from place to place in perpetual victory. Get that deep in your spirit this morning. God's not leading you to defeat. God's not leading you to devastation. He's leading you to perpetual victory. And don't you quit now. You undergird your life. You undergird your call. You undergird your marriage, your business with the word of God. Cheer up. Brace up, focus on what you have, strengthen that which remains. And then lastly, he said in, in Acts 27 and 18, they begin to lighten the load. Listen to this, with their own hands. See, the truth is when you, when you Paul, apparently they had gone to different ports and they'd picked up stuff they didn't start out the journey with. And before you know it, your life gets full of stuff. But the thing that a storm will do is the storm will come and it will cause you to begin to see the extra stuff that you have taken on board that really don't, doesn't matter. The responsibilities, the, 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 the distractions from the main purpose of our calling and our walk with Jesus Christ. And so when we go through storms, suddenly we start throwing. They start with their own hands. Quit waiting on God to do everything and take your own hands and say, you know what? I'm going through something. There goes the baggage of complaining. I'm not going to complain all the way through this storm. There goes the baggage of depression. There goes the baggage baggage of fear. There goes the baggage of past failure. There goes the baggage of, of unforgiveness and bitterness. You have to unload when you're going through a storm, just get down to what's essential. And that's Jesus. Because when it's all said and done, that baggage can over, that over baggage uh, of weight can, can sink yourself, the, sink your ship. The apostle Paul put it like this. He said, lay aside every weight that does so easily beset you. And I wrote down three that in my life, when I go through storms, these are the three things the enemy tries to hit me with and their baggage that I have to lighten up. I always have to throw them over. Number one, insufficiency. When I go through storms, I don't know why, but the enemy attacks me with a spirit that says, you're insufficient. 
Insufficiency means not enough education, not enough talent, not enough money. No, but I got enough God. If I've got enough God, he'll take me places that I never dreamed. He'll send me where he wants me to go. He'll pay the bill. Insufficiency. Get it off your boat. You're going to the other side. Insecurity. I can't do this. I hear a little voice in my head sometimes when I get in a storm. You, you, you're going to lose. Insecurity. Throw it off of your ship. The last one is insignificance. I always hear a little voice that says, no one really needs you. You're not important. You're not right for the part. You just put yourself there. Insignificance. But when you hear those voices in the middle of a storm, that's God saying, I'm letting you go through this so you throw all that stuff off and be who I've called you to be, confident and bold and courageous and stand there in your faith, not in you, but in your anchor. Your anchor is Jesus. The, 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 listen, <laughs> The boat doesn't keep itself in the storm. It's the anchor. The responsibility is on the anchor. And Jesus is our anchor. He's the rock of ages. So everybody say right now, brace up. Cheer up. And I want you to lighten up. Throw it off and keep on going in Jesus' mighty name. You see, when people are anchored improperly, it can cost them their life. And that's when the part of the story where the Bible said they got to a certain place and Paul said, we put out four anchors. We put out four anchors. We wanted to make sure that we were properly anchored in the middle of the storm. Max Lucado, the famous author, tells a story in one of his books how that in 1979, in the uh, Miami, Florida area, uh, there were four boys who were young men in college who were living on a houseboat on the Miami River. And he happened to be one of the four boys on that houseboat that was living, going to school on the Miami River. And they were told that Hurricane David was coming in and it was going to be a rough one. And so they said, being inexperienced and novices to hurricanes, they tied their houseboat, which was their home, up to the pier, and then they even ran cables to trees up on the land. And an old kind of leathered skin guy, I think he said his name was Theo, came by and he was a man of the water. He was a sailor and a ship man. And he walked by and he said something to them, according to Max Licato. He said, if you tie to the land, you'll regret it. Those trees and those piers will be eaten up by the incoming hurricane. Then he made a powerful statement. He said, your only hope is to anchor deep. And he said, when you get out there in deep water, take four anchors and throw them out in four different directions and then pray. And come back in on a boat and go in land somewhere and get safe and we'll see what happens when the hurricane passes. But what a profound thought that, that, that you go out into deep water. Your only hope is the anchor to go deep in God and throw out four anchors. Now I want to give you those four anchors real quick. It won't take me but about three minutes on each anchor if you're not a long-winded audience. That means if you shout on any of these points, it's on your time, not mine. All right, you ready? Oh, everybody's turning Baptist and Presbyterian right now. <laughs> they drop four anchors. The first anchor that'll keep you afloat when you're going through the storm is the anchor of purpose. I'm here for a purpose. My purpose is stronger than the storm. Purpose doesn't change in a storm. Two things about purpose. Number one, purpose predates your conception. Jeremiah said, before I was in my mother's womb, you had a plan and ordained me to be a prophet and you had a call on my life. So my purpose was greater than my conception in my mother's womb. Secondly, my purpose was planned without my input. God said, this is why you will be put on this earth. And he didn't ask your opinion. He put something in you that you don't even know that is unstoppable as long as you are doing what God has called you and purposed you to do. 
And you got to focus on your purpose when you get in the storm. Focus on the purpose. Just focus on, on what's ahead of you, not what you're going through. Losers focus on what they're going through. But champions focus on what they're going to. That's why Hebrews 12 and verse 2 said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why? Who for the joy that was set before him. He was looking at the shore. He wasn't focusing on the storm. He had a prize. He had a reward. He had something in front of him, his purpose. His scripture said, looking unto Jesus, and it said, the author and the finisher of our faith, watch this, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. What enabled him to make it through his storm on that cross that Friday afternoon was what he was seeing, his purpose. He saw what would happen on the other side of the crucifixion. And that's what you have to do. God has used sinners. God has used failures, but God cannot use quitters. So you have to drop the anchor of purpose and say, God put me here. God called me. God put us together. God gave me this business. God is for me. He's not against me. There's divine purpose connected to my life and the storm will not stop me. I'll focus on the shore and I'll make it through the storm. I'm not going to talk about what I'm going through all the time. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to. Clap your hands and shout if you believe it. I've got a purpose. You've got a purpose. The second anchor that you've got to drop is the anchor of courage. When you get in a storm, you have to courage up. That's why he told Joshua four times, be of good courage. In Joshua chapter one, be of good courage. Get some courage when the storm comes. We don't whine in the middle of a storm. We don't go to pieces in the middle of a storm. We stand up on our hind legs and we say, I have Jesus with me and I can make it through this storm. I'm, I'm grieving, I'm hurting, I'm broken, I'm devastated. But I, and in that moment, you either kowtow down and you just wither up or you stand up with a spirit of courage and and say, if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm going on. I'm going on. Courage, 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 courage. Courage is the ability to finish the race even if you're in last place. Courage is standing with up to your daughter or your son when they want to date the cool guy or the pretty girl, but you know deep in your soul it's a dangerous situation for their life. That's courage. Courage is forgiving a friend who lets you down. Courage is loving a husband in the midst of a financial crisis that he caused or a wife that she, the crisis she caused. Courage keeps on. Courage is refusing to let cancer steal your smile. Refusing to let cancer steal your joy, but you go in and you take chemotherapy with an incredible attitude of courage that says, you know what? I'm just believing that God's not through with me and I drop the anchor of courage and I drop the anchor of purpose and my purpose is greater. My destiny is greater than my dilemma. God is going to take me through to the other side. I just believe it. Come on and shout amen. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a better shout. Try it again. Courage is trying again. Courage is dreaming again. Courage is saying, I will not quit. I am going to keep going. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's doing it in spite of fear. I'm afraid, but here I go. Don't lose sight of the shore in the storm. There's a third anchor that I think is so important. Boy, this one really speaks to my life because it's been one of the keys of all of these. But I thought about that anchor of worship. When you get in a storm, we are not called to be a bunch of whiners that whine about how bad and dark the storm is. Worship, not whining, is what we do in storms. It's what Christians do in storms. You see, we don't worship him for what he's done or what he's allowed us to go through. We worship him for who he is. He's the captain of the sea. We sing old song in the church, put your hand in the hand of the man. Y'all don't know that. Who walks the what? Who steals the water? I don't even know it. 
Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently by taking, putting your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. That's a good song. Courage and worship. You see, worship is God's address. When you begin to worship God, God shows up. The most powerful thing you can do when you get in a storm is not wine, but worship. Throw your hands up, open your mouth up with broken hearts, with devastated minds, and you begin to worship God. Worship is where the answers will come, where the victory will come, where the breakthrough will come. Don't let the enemy steal. Drop the anchor of worship. And we're not going to church. Why are we going this week? We've had the worst week than we, that's when we really need to go and drop the anchor of worship and say, nothing's going to stop me from coming in. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I don't want a little golf clap. I want somebody to worship with a clap. I want somebody to act like I'm preaching the truth. Because here's the thing about this. Some of you, I'm not in a storm. This doesn't concern me. It's a matter of time. And then that point will mean something to you. One more anchor. When you get in the storm, you've got to be anchored. This is so important. To the church. When I was thinking about this message, I thought about my childhood all my life. And let's say this is the anchor. Let's say this pulpit is the anchor. And I, and, and I throw my anchor over there and I... And, and, and I'm connected to a rock that can't be moved, and that's Jesus. But it's very natural to drift. I don't care who you are. You're not going to be this close to the presence of God all the time. You just drift. You just start drifting. I'm going to tell you something about temptation. I'm going to tell you something just in general about life. You get busy. It's not that you necessarily do anything. You just start drifting. But if I am anchored... I can only drift so far and I feel the tug back. I can only go so far in temptation before I feel a tug. That's how you know you're saved, by the way. If you just go on out here and do anything and everything that the world does, you're not saved. But if you're saved, you've got, you are connected and attached to an anchor and it'll hold you back by word if I hid in my heart that I would not sin against God. And just when you start to, it'll pull you back. Just when you start to give up, it'll pull you back. Just when you feel yourself drifting into depression and fear, the word of God and coming to God's house. I thought about it. What kept me from becoming a drug addict in my youth? What kept me from sleeping with girls? What kept me from living an immoral life? What kept me from becoming an alcoholic? Just probably another 80 feet out there was alcoholism for me. But I had my parents had put me in church and took me to church and I had an anchor on me and I could only go so far and even though I could have something I don't know why I look back on it now it was the power of the covenant that my family had made with God for me that held me back so from so many tragic terrible things you ought to shout on that because if you're in church, it's working for you. The covenant is working on your children right now. Woo! While they're down there, they're getting anchored to a rock that is immovable. It, it is unshakable. It's steadfast and sure. And that anchor of the church, that anchor of the church, you know, when you get problems, don't run from the church. We're not a bunch of perfect people. Some of these people walking around with badges, they're all messed up. You don't know, you don't know. Some of these holding microphones, they got all kinds of issues. We don't run from church. We get anchored. Drop your anchor. Say, this is my church. 
And when I need straightening out, pastor's going to have a word that's going to blister my, my hide. Amen. And when I need encouragement, pastor's going to have a word because I'm anchored. I'm anchored. Some of you young couples need to hear this. You don't hit, skip, and miss church with a young marriage and a young family. Right now are the years that you get your family anchored so that when the storms of temptation, when the waves of carnality start hitting in, in the university or wherever, I was so proud of my boy Drake. He sent me a text this morning. I, I didn't threaten him with his life. He's in D.C. following his dreams. He got an internship with the government and going to school and all that. But he sent me a text this morning and I didn't even tell him that he had to. I knew it had a long week and I was just going to let him stream live, I guess, and not go to any church. And it's his first week there. But he sent me and Sharice a text and it was a picture of being in Passion City Church, Louis Giglio's church in D.C. And he's sitting on the third row, it looked like, because I noticed everything. And it just thrilled my soul that, you know, all those times, Sharice, now that he's out on his own, something, the anchor got a hold of him and said, it's Sunday, get up and go to the house of the Lord. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. It's, it really, really is a powerful anchor. Powerful anchor. David put it like this. I'm almost done. I feel the Holy Ghost. Turn to somebody and say, your casual relationship with this church is over. You better get anchor. Drop your anchor. Tell them, drop your anchor. I know when you, get, when you get a bad report, when you're going through hell, you better have an anchor in a church that can help you get through the storm. It's life or death. If you're improperly anchored, see, some of you are improperly anchored. You try to treat this like it's just something you do when you feel like it. And you're really anchored in material things, but, but some problems have come to your family that money can't fix. Some of you are anchored to drugs and alcohol because that's your go-to when the storm comes. But that's that's going to bring devastation and death and destruction. Some of you are listening to me and you're anchored to, to, to your relationships more than you are to Jesus. Your friendships with the world more than you are Jesus. This stuff is life or death. That, those, those young men, three of them, powerful athletes, strong. But the storm got them because of improper anchoring. And I close with this thought. David said, I almost slipped. I almost fell. I think they've got this verse. Throw it up. I thought how to understand it's too painful for me. Next part. Until I went to the sanctuary of God. I just want to say, if you feel like quitting, come to church. If you're watching me by television and you feel like it's over for you and you might as well take your life, come to church. Get anchored in a church. God, God will speak to you in a church. He will do. The Bible put it like this. How good and how pleasant it is for men to dwell together in unity. Dwell together in unity. There, God commands a blessing. In other words, God, I'm sorry streamers, but God will do things there where there's people assembled in unity together that he will not do when you're by yourself. There is a there commanded blessing every time you assemble in his name. Wow. And I receive it today, don't you? So I close with this last verse. And I want to end it. Can I read it? Act excited about it. Don't act like he's going long. Don't, don't do that. I can feel your vibe. I feel you. Listen to this. This is an amazing verse. Verse 18 of Hebrews 6 says, Two immutable things when you're in a storm. Number one, that it is impossible for God to lie. The one you're connected to cannot fail, cannot lie, and cannot lose. Watch this. This hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, wherein we enter the presence behind the veil. And the next verse tells you what's behind the veil, Jesus. I want you to hear this. He said, 
Pretend that's the veil. And behind the veil, there's a veil here. And behind the veil of the old covenant, there was the Ark of the Covenant. It represents Jesus. He said, I have an anchor of hope. This is interesting. The smallest form of faith is hope. I just hope so. I don't even have faith to believe that it will happen. I just hope so. I haven't lost all hope. I haven't lost all hope. When I take my hope and I throw it beyond the veil, it attaches. Here's the beautiful thing. My faith transforms it in midair into an anchor. And my anchor takes hold of Jesus, my high priest, my provider, my healer, my deliverer. And I have an anchor for my soul. Whatever comes against me, it, here's, here's how Paul put it in Romans 8. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Failure can't. Mess up can't. Temptation can't. Disappointments can't. Dash dreams can't. Discouragement can't. I am forever attached. And I may drift and I may be closer during the 21 day fast. We all feel like we're right here. But then a few trials and a few battles and a few setbacks. And we're way out here. But nothing can separate me. Woo. Oh, we need to shout right there. <laughs> That's victory. That's a blessing when you know he's got me. Nothing can separate me from that God who calls me by my name. He knows the hairs on my head. And he's for us today. Every, everyone in this room, please stand reverently. No one moving in or out. Just stand on your feet at every campus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I sense great, great, great conviction. Somebody has been drifting without the anchors for your soul. And you know if something doesn't stop with that situation, that lifestyle you're in, you're going to end up crashing on the rocks. But this is your altar call today at every campus right here in this room. Pastor Franklin, I need an anchor for my soul. I feel like I've just drifted so far. I would love to get back where I need to be. Today is your day to take the hope. I hope I could quit. I hope I could change. I hope I could be. I hope all you got to do is take that hope and throw it beyond the veil and let it attach itself as an anchor to Jesus Christ, the rock of our salvation. And he says, once you do that, I'll never let you go. There's no storm that can break that chain of faith in God, in Jesus Christ. Pastor, pray for me. I'm not where I ought to be. I'm not right with God. I want to get right with God this morning. If that's you, I know I'm preaching to you. This is a big service right here. Pastor, pray for me. I need to get right with God. If that's you and you know you're not right and you want to be, quickly throw up your hand right where you're standing. I want to see it. Quick, quick, quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. There, 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 there. Yes, yes, yes. At every campus, raise, raise them high. Just keep it up. Just keep it up because there's victory in raising that hand. Just keep it up all over this room. You're going to have to trust me with this. I won't embarrass you. But every person who raised your hand, you can bring a friend if you want to. But get out of your seat and walk down here real quick. This will take two minutes. Walk down here. This, something's going to break off of you the moment you take a step. The past is going to break. You're throwing the baggage off. You're throwing the hurt off. You're throwing the failure off. You're throwing it off. You're lightening your load. Come on, come on, come on. At every campus, get out of the seat. The pastors are coming. Just right where you are. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There's some of you maybe in overflow. Come on in. This is your altar call. This is yours. Maybe your marriage is in a storm. Maybe your finances are in a storm. Maybe you feel like you're about to go under. We love you. Come on down here. Drop an anchor. Drop an anchor of purpose. Drop an anchor of courage. Drop an anchor of worship. Drop an anchor. And say, oh God, I'm connecting to your church today. I believe you have a higher plan and purpose for my life. Let's sing it, everybody. Declare these words.
How many of you are going through some storms in your life? Would you lift that hand as a, a representation of that storm and declare this song? It's a powerful song. Sing it now. Oh. Cornerstone, we make strong in the Savior's love. going to sing it one more time if you want to come this is your altar call get out of that get out of that place you've been and come to Jesus this morning he's calling you home today cast your anchor of hope for your soul and latch hold of Jesus Christ the rock the stone I've always feel a little pressure about time, 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 time. But I feel like we ought to raise our hands toward heaven and we ought to worship the Lord. I want, I want three kinds of people to worship the Lord. I want people who sense that you're about to go through a storm because you know something's coming up on your agenda and your calendar and it's an issue that you got to deal with. I want you to begin to worship. I drop an anchor. I want those of you who are going through a storm to pause everything. The wind's blowing. The heat is on. The devil's whispering, but, 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 this is your reality. This is yours. Right now, you raise your hands and drop an anchor of worship. And I want some of us who have been through storms and presently we're not in them, but God has been so good can we raise our hands and thank him that he's faithful let's just begin to worship him just a moment just begin to let gratitude and faith and confidence pour out of your soul to the Lord Lord I worship you I worship you I worship you I'm so thankful that you don't let us go you don't let us go you don't let our children go you don't let our grandchildren go and just drift away but God you are faithful once we get the hook in them, there's no demon that can stop it. There's no destruction that comes that can stop it. You make a connection that hell can't break with our families. Lord, I pray for every marriage. I pray for every home. I pray for every household that's going through the storm that they feel like they can't make it work. I felt them while I was preparing this message this week. And I ask you, Lord, to put braces around that home that feels like it's about to fall to pieces. May the anointing of God come on the husband, the anointing come on the wife, the anointing come on the children. Bless that single mother. Bless that college student that's been drifting. Bring him back into the harbor safely, oh God. We give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Now pray this prayer. Everybody pray this prayer. Say these words, Lord Jesus, today I have hope and I cast my hope beyond the veil and you change my hope into an anchor and it attaches itself to Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose again. I put all my confidence in the anchor that is Jesus Christ. My anchor holds there's no storm that can take me away from His love. And in Jesus' name, I am forgiven. Praise the Lord. Throw your hands up one more time and declare. Would you sing one of those verses? I love those verses. Can we just worship a minute? Can we just worship? You can, you, you can leave if you need to leave. But throw your hands up. We're going to worship. Drop an anchor. Sing that verse again. I really believe this is a decoration over your life in the midst of the storm. Say it, everybody. Hope is built Then Jesus Christ. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but holy trust is Jesus' name. Come on, sing it, everybody. Christ, Christ alone, the cornerstone, the weak made strong. It's not up to 
to the boat to be strong. It's up to the anchor to be strong. It's up to the rock that you've attached yourself to to be strong. Sing it with faith this morning. It's the faith that overcomes the world. I feel like praying. When darkness seems to give us the word. His face. I rest. Yes. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale. In every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds. My anchor holds. Sing that verse again. Sing that verse again. When Give us the word quickly. When darkness seems to hide you ever been there? I rest, I rest on His amazing grace. amazing grace. Yes, sing it. In every high and stormy day, my anchor holds within the side of this storm. Amazing purpose is attached. Divine appointments, open doors are on the other side of your storm. In Jesus' name. You receive it? Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Every one of you are born again upon the authority of God's Word. Welcome to the family. We're so thrilled with what Jesus has done for you. None of you are outcast. You are part of the family today, and we love you, and we so thank God for what He did. Get signed up for next steps. I want to baptize you in water real quick. You know, you didn't play around when you were in sin. You, you went from one thing to the other. Go, go as hard after God as you have after the devil, and you'll be a great Christian. We love you. Be blessed, everybody. Have a great week. God bless you. I'll see you Wednesday night. I'll be preaching. Don't forget Divine Conference in two weeks. Ladies, one of the greatest events that we put on. If you're new to the church, it's not what you think. It's not some boring little talks to women. I promise you, it is one of the greatest, most entertaining, fun. But beyond that, there comes that connection I was talking about. There comes relationships. There comes an anchoring to your call as a woman of God. We believe in your call enough to bring speakers in. One of them's coming from England. One of them's coming from Los Angeles. One of them, we're bringing them in from all over the world because we believe in your call as women of God. So whatever you do, don't miss being here. It's going to be remarkable in every way. And you don't want to miss it. Be blessed, everybody. Praise God. Uh, I, if, if any of you are in Atlanta tonight, come on over to uh, Center Stage, Midtown at 6, six o'clock. 6 o'clock. I'll be preaching there live tonight. I'm excited about that. We're going to have church in Midtown. It's going good down there. God is blessed. If you know any friends or family in the Atlanta community, call them and say, you got to get there tonight. They'll be blessed, I guarantee you.
even here today, as you heard Pastor Jensen saying about Divine Conference coming up in just a few short weeks. If you have not yet registered, do that right now. You can go to divineconference.org. Register yourself, a friend, a family member. We do a free child care this incredible weekend. It's going to change so many lives. So make sure you register today, divineconference.org. But then lastly, don't forget about School of Discipleship that is now available online. Go to freechapel.org forward slash SOD online. This four-phase discipleship program will change your life. I promise you that. But we love you so much. We are thrilled that you joined us here for another experience at Free Chapel. And we'll see you next Sunday morning.